Heavenly Father, we come in the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit to give all the glory, honor, and praise to you, God the Father, to you, God the Son, to you, God the Holy Spirit. With your love, you have saved us. With your power, you have raised us. With your blood, you have bathed us. With your mercy, you forgave us. And with your grace, you've given us your amazing new life more abundantly. Guide us, Heavenly Father, to see you more clearly, to love you more dearly, to follow you more nearly, to trust you more surely, and to worship you more purely. Give us a heart to give to you more cheerfully, to obey you more willfully, to serve you more skillfully, to pray to you more cheerfully, and respect your word more fearfully. In the name of Jesus, name of Jesus. Amen. amen. Look at somebody next to you and say, the Lord is calling you, calling you to, discipleship. to discipleship. And then say to yourself, I am more than a fan. I am more than a fan. I'm a follower. I'm a and as we go to the word today, we remind ourselves of what Jesus told us right before he was uh, getting ready to go home. I'm going to go to Luke 9, 23. And he said, saying to all of them, if anyone wishes to follow me, somebody say, as my disciple, as my disciple he, must deny himself, he must deny himself, set aside selfish interests, interest, take, take up his cross daily, expressing a willingness, expressing a willingness to, endure to endure whatever may come, and follow me. Believing in, me, Believing in me, conforming to my example, in living, living, and if need be, if need be suffering, suffering or, perhaps dying, or perhaps dying, because of his faith in me. Because of his faith in me. And at the top of your handout, we have his great commission. He says, all authority, power, and absolute rule in heaven and on earth has been given to me. He says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, helping the people to learn of me, believe in me, and obey my words, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, remaining with you perpetually, regardless of the circumstance, and on every occasion, even to the end of the age. And as we were closing out our discipleship study on Wednesday, praise God, one of the most revelatory statements that we were going through was Jesus never called anybody to become a Christian. His call was for us to become disciples. The word disciple is used 273 times in the word of God. The word Christian is mentioned three times. In the book, uh, uh, in Antioch is where we were first called Christians because they were acting, somebody say, Christ-like. Christ they were being like Christ. They were loving people and helping people and encouraging people, praise God. And when the word came, praise God, about being a disciple, a disciple is a person who follows the teachings of his master, praise God. It means an unconditional sacrifice to the Lord, praise God. It's kind of like the difference between a fair weather fan and a follower. And we know, y'all, we've got some people who, uh, when it comes to our home teams, how many of us have ever met a fair weather oh, yeah. fan? Oh, yeah. And when our team is winning, they on the bus. Yes, but let them lose a couple of games. Then all of a sudden, praise God, they get back on that fence. And if they win another game, they'll jump on that side of the fence. But let Dak throw another interception. He's jumping on this side of the fence. And Jesus is calling us not to just be Christian, somebody say, I'm more than a fan. I'm more than a fan. I'm a follower. I'm a follower. And Jesus, when people were following him and, and, and saying they would do
do all these things to follow him, Jesus went to say, anyone who comes after me, let him deny himself. Somebody say, die of self. Die of self. Take, up your cross Take up your cross and follow me. And what is the cross? If you've read my book, Where Do You Stand? You know that to deny yourself means to deny yourself the cross every day of your life. Your will crosses God's will. It's something God wants you to do and it's something you want to do, praise God. And you got a choice if you're going to follow yourself or you're going to follow the Lord. Now the word Lord means where he leads me, I'll follow and Jesus had to remind some people in his day, he says, why do you call me Lord when you don't do what I tell you to do? And he was giving this message to those who were fans but not followers. Amen. And God is saying we have too many fans in the body of Christ. And he wants us to grow up to be followers because we have to grow up so that we can help others to grow up themselves. The G in grow up. Somebody say go to God daily in prayer. Oh, Who's made up your mind to pray about everything and to worry about nothing? The aura. Somebody say read God's word. Read God's word. Every day. Every day. Pastor Wilbur would tell you if he was here today, y'all, that the Bible that's falling apart belongs to a person that's not falling apart. Amen. The psalmist said, the word I've hidden in my heart so that I won't sin against thee. The psalmist says the blessed man or the blessed woman, they don't listen to the world, praise God. They, they don't uh, listen to the counsel of the ungodly. They don't stand in the way of sinners or sit in the seat of the scornful, but their delight is in the law of God. Somebody say the word of God. The word of God. And in the word they meditate day and night. And God has been challenging us for days and weeks and months. What you think about, you bring about, and you got to meditate on the word of God. If you are going through any type of ailment, your number one confession needs to be by Jesus stripes, I am healed. He didn't say I'm going to be healed. He said I am healed because in your spirit you are already healed. In your body, in your soul, you've got to catch up with your spirit. But the word of God says those who worship him must worship him. How? In spirit and in truth. So your confession needs to be what is already done. Hallelujah. Not I'm in so much pain. Hallelujah. I'm broken in the Ten Commandments. Hallelujah. Things don't never work. Everything I eat turns to fat. Hallelujah. You keep saying that and somebody say you're going to stay fat. Well, when God gives you an instruction like he did today, y'all, about this high fructose corn syrup, he's expecting you to take heed. And somebody going to look at that and say, I don't care what you passed out, Pastor. I like my soda pop. <laughs> and Jesus is saying, why do you call me Lord when you don't do what I tell you to do? Every commandment that God gives us is for our benefit. And he wants us to follow him so that we can live the life that he gave his life for us yeah. to live. Yeah. He wants us to be disciples and not friends. Yeah. Fans can come to the game or they can come to the house of the Lord, but they're going to keep doing whatever they was doing anyhow. <laughs> but a disciple is going to listen to the word of God and make corrections to their life because God has to transform us. As Jesus reminded us, this thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. He has to take you from the land of not enough, somebody say slavery, slavery. to get you to trust in his word and shift you to the land of just enough. Just enough. Just enough. And that's when you learn to trust God mm -hmm. to the land of more than enough. And I just want to give you a simple formula that God gave me to share with you on how to become a disciple. The D, somebody say, do what the Lord tells you to do. And Mary gave us that advice at the wedding in Canaan. You've heard me teach the principle. 
If he says duck, what do we do? Duck. If he says go, what do we do? Go. If he says shut up, what do we do? Shut up. If he says stay away from that high fructose corn syrup, what do we do? Stay away from that high fructose corn syrup. And some of us, I know you may have some cases of soda in your old pantry, but for the next 21 days, you need to stay away from high fructose corn syrup. And it gave you 10 reasons for you to stay away. It causes cancer. Mm -hmm. It causes high blood pressure. Yeah. It does all kinds of things that you can read up on yourself why you shouldn't be doing that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I just like it. The fool is said in his heart, what? There is no God. I'm going to do this anyway. And don't be calling me when they talking about cutting off two of your toes. The Bible says warning comes before destruction. And for some of us, we've gotten the warning. And the thing that I like to say, y'all, if I don't have it in my house, I can't drink it. Right. If I don't have it in my house, I can't eat it. Right. And don't say, I'm just going to store it up just in case. <laughs> Somebody come over. Because if you really love that person that come over, you shouldn't be offering it to them no way. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. When he says, do what I tell you to do, he's talking about denying yourself. Somebody again say, die of self. Die of self. And we live in a world today, y'all, where people don't have the discipline they need to become a disciple. And we know the word discipline means choosing what you want most over what you want now. God wants us to be disciplined because a disciple has to be a person of discipline. You got to do what's right. I promise you, if you follow God's plan and your blood pressure is high, your blood pressure is going to start going down. Amen. Your diabetes is going to start getting better. And don't listen to nobody saying, as long as you take this pill, you can eat anything you want. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And you don't have to exercise. Uh -huh. The devil is a liar. Yes, and the truth is not in him. Yes. Nobody should want to be on some medication for all your life. God looks at these pill boxes. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday again. And he's saying, I came for you to have life and have it more abundantly. And what kind of quality of life is it? when you can't do the things that you need to do in ministry because of your health. Mm -hmm. We talked about this last week. Somebody said your health is your wealth. Your health is your wealth. And some of us, praise God, uh, uh, at one time uh, the devil thought he had you, but Jesus came and grabbed you. The devil attacked you with some type of disease, which means not having ease. And if you're in a wheelchair, somebody say, that, that's not having ease. But we took that step of faith. We talked about that person last week. As those ten lepers were healed, the Bible says as they went, they were healed. Do I have one or two persons that was in a wheelchair and ain't in no wheelchair today? Give God a praise. Offer. He thought he had. But Jesus came and grabbed me. I was talking to one of our brothers yesterday, praise God, and, and, and he was in that situation, but he is on a path right now, praise God. You know, sometimes you got to crawl before you walk and walk before you run, and he was saying, Pastor, uh, I broke my own record for walking around the park, praise God. I, I timed myself, and I broke that record, praise God, and, and I could just hear the Holy Spirit saying, yes, yes, yes. That's what I'm talking about. God always does his part, but we have to do our part. You can say, by his stripes, I'm healed all you want, but if you stand up there stuffing your mouth with a six-pack of donuts, it's okay to have a donut every now and then. The point I'm trying to make, don't nobody get offended by this, y'all, but you can't live off of donuts person that gets up 
uh, early can sleep late every once in a while, but you can't make a diet out of chitlins yeah. and hog mouths. Yeah. You got to eat but what's best for your body. So he says, do what I tell you to do. Learn how to deny yourself. Take up the cross when my will crosses God's will. Sometimes, y'all, we be about to do some things and, and we know that ain't God's will. But the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And a disciplined person chooses what they want most over what they want now. Praise God. A disciple, somebody say, into Christ. Into 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, if any man or woman be in Christ, we are what? New creations. The former things are passed away, but we have to behold it that all things have become new. Do I have anybody with a new walk? I'm walking by faith and not by sight. The doctor may have told me something, but I'm standing on the report of God. Whose report will you believe? I'm speaking the word. Not my circumstances. I'm calling things that are not as though they are until they are. Because the word works when you work it, y'all. All we got to do is do our part. We want the Lord to do it all. If you want a new job, praise God, uh, you can't make God a cosmic bell hop that's going to come in here and just, okay, here's the job report on Wednesday. The Bible says faith without works is dead. You got to do your part. You got to fill out an application. You got to ask somebody, do you know anybody that's hiring? I remember the other day, praise God, it, it, it was a situation where somebody was asking me about a job and it was somebody else in the church that heard the conversation and that person came into the conversation and said, I know somebody that's hiring. And that's the way God works when we have faith he has power but he wants his children to become disciples to be into him and God has seen you when you into somebody he has seen you when you thought you was in love in the car looking like Pete and repeat don't need no bucket seats cause half of your behind is off the seat next to your boot he has seen you on the telephone it's 2 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Baby, you sleepy. <laughs> no. And the next thing, you bust out snoring. <laughs> Knowing you were sleepy. And he says, get into me like that. And see what it's like. Watch it's like to grow in love with me. Because you, you fall in love with people in the world. But with the Lord, you grow in love with Jesus. And how many can say that's the best thing I've ever done? Hallelujah. It's the best thing I've done. Growing in love. When I gave my life to him, he gave his life to me. And it wasn't a good deal. It was the greatest deal of my life. It was the greatest decision of my life. And he's saying, to win it, you got to get in it. Because the only thing you get by being casual, you end up being a casualty. Because that makes lukewarm. He says, I'm, I want you to be hot. But if you're not going to be hot, be cold. Because if you're lukewarm, I'll spew you out of my mouth. And I don't know about you, y'all. I would rather be in no relationship. That's right. Than to be in a relationship with somebody that's lukewarm. Yeah. Wasting your time. Yeah. Trying to stay in your life just enough to block something better from coming in your life. Yeah. Somebody got their eye on you, but every time they see you, you don't have boys, you got his cousin. Yeah. They say, well, I guess it ain't time because she's not free. Well, he not free. But to win it, we have to get in it. Yes, yeah, somebody say, seek first the kingdom. Seek first the kingdom. And his righteousness. And his, righteousness. And his promises. All these other things will be added unto you. He said, don't worry about it. I know what you need even before you ask. But make up your mind to take care of my business. 
Yes. And I'll take care of your yes. business. Yes. I heard one of the mothers quoting from old. She said, I've been young and now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken or a seed begging bread. You have said that. Yes. 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 What God ordains, he will maintain. Yes. And where God guides, he will provide. Yes. But he wants you to put him first. He says, place no other God, person, place, or thing. Where? Before me. And if we learn to put him first, praise God. He's got it. And for some, he's saying, somebody say, choose Christ. Choose Christ. And I go back to the children of Israel, y'all. It was so hard for them to break that slavery Mindset. They had spent several hundred years in slavery in Egypt, and, and, and God finally freed them, and he, he brought them through the Red Sea on dry land, fed them with manna from heaven, gave them water from a rock, told them to go into the promised land, and finally Joshua had to come to them because they were still struggling with a slave mentality, still struggling with some of the ways that their ancestors were doing. And Joshua just said, choose this day who you're going to serve. I can't speak for your house. But who would join me by saying, as for me and my house, we going to serve the Lord. I will trust in him. Even when I can't trace him, I'll have faith in him. Even when I can't find him, I'll have hope in him that's beyond my scope. Because he's already shown me that he's at his best when I can't see the make way. Has he ever been a way maker for anybody in here? A promise keeper. A heart fixer. A light in the darkness. That's just who he is. But he needs us, y'all, to put him first and to choose him. And then as we are being discipled and we're growing, y'all, from all of me, none of God, through some of me, some of God, to all of God, and none of me. Somebody say instruct others. And again, I'm reminded of this little girl who was so excited about she was learn what she was learning. She was learning the piano. And the first thing you do when you're excited about something you're learning, you want somebody else to know the good stuff that you know. So as soon as she ran in the house, she got her little two-year-old brother, and she put him on the piano and said, this is what you need to do today. This is what you need to practice today. And the teacher heard her, and he told the mother, put that little girl on the phone. She don't know enough to be trying to teach nobody else. And as soon as he tried to scold her, the little girl said to the teacher, I know more than my brother knows. And when you find something good, I'm reminded of a woman at the well when Jesus told her about herself. She ran down the hills and come see a man. Come see a man that told me everything about myself. Jeremiah was said like this. It was like fire. Shut up in my bone. You ever had something so good? I said I wasn't going to tell nobody. But I couldn't keep it to myself. What the Lord has done for me. You ought to been there. When he saved my soul. You ought to been there. When he put my name on the road. I started walking. I started talking. I started singing. I started shouting. About what the Lord has done for me. And that's what disciples do. Fans don't do that. They keep it to themselves. Mm -hmm. But a disciple has to share yeah. what they've learned with yeah. others. Yeah. And God wants to know, are you a fan or are you a follower? Yeah. We got plenty of fans in the body of Christ. But he's saying it's time to be a follower in the body of Christ and instruct others on what you've learned. As I round this up, y'all, a disciple, their purpose is to please God, not man. Yes. See, we got too many people pleasers in the world. But God says, are you a God pleaser? 
Have you made up your mind to place no other God before him? Have you made up your mind to love him with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength? Have you made up your mind even when you're going through a negative report? The psalmist said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. I don't care what the doctors say, what the lawyers say. I'm putting the praise on him. I'll exalt him at all times. Because I'm seeking first the kingdom. And if I seek first the kingdom, whatever comes by the will of God will be met by the grace of God. That's his job to protect me and to provide for me and to be a priest for me because he procreated me. And he's the perfect father. And he says, as I focus on this, he says, if you're going to be a disciple, you got to love me with all your heart. Peter, he came to him three times. He says, Peter, do you really love me? And Peter said, Jesus, you know I love you. But Jesus said, now, Peter, do you really love me? Come on, Jesus, you know everything. Peter, do you really love me? Well, if you really love me, Peter, why are you out here fishing for fish? And you're not feeding my sheep. A disciple feeds God's sheep. A disciple seeks those who are lost and lets them know about somebody who can save anybody. A disciple lets them know it's no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, he will do for you. And when we love him, we're not ashamed of the Lord. We let everybody know that he's our savior. And lastly, somebody say eternal life. Disciples know that we are here for a reason and we're here for a season. And only what we do for Christ will last. You can build cathedrals large or small, build skyscrapers grand and tall, conquer all the failures of the past. Somebody help me. But only what you do for Christ will last. You can seek earthly fortune and fame. The world can be impressed by your social media name. But soon all the glories of this world will pass. Only what we do for Christ will last. Though your songs or movies can be praised by man, they are of no use unless you've been born again. Listen to what I'm saying. Don't let the moment pass. Only what we do for Christ will last. If you can receive a given praise to him. He's calling us to discipleship. He wants to know, are you a fan? Are you a follower? We got plenty of fans, y'all. But the problem with being a fan, like with our sports team, we get fair weather sometimes. If they win and we fans, if they lose it, we not fans. But a real follower is going to be with you in the good times and the bad times. They're not interested, they are committed. And we know commitment is like ham and eggs. The chicken was interested, but the pig was committed. God wants to know, do I have anybody that's committed? That's all he wants. I'm committed to grow up and be all that Jesus gave his life to be. The Bible says when it came to the Lord, he was the express image of the Father. When they asked him to show him the Father, you know what Jesus said? If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Because I don't do nothing and I say nothing. I go anywhere until the Father tells me to go. Amen. And that's what he wants for us, y'all. Where he leads me, I will follow. And Father, we just come today thanking you for the transformation from being fans to followers. And Father, with our heart, we just ask you to take our heart and mold it, our mind and transform it, our will and conform it to your will be done. 
Father, lead us and guide us to see you more clearly, to love you more dearly, to follow you more nearly, to trust you more surely, and to worship you more purely. Father, give us a heart to give to you more cheerfully, obey you more willfully, serve you more skillfully, pray to you more cheerfully, and respect your word commandments more fervently. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 Give him a praise offering. Amen.